Hey guys, I'm Mark Miller, and today we're reviewing the brand new Nisi 15mm f4 wide angle Sunstar lens. Alright, before we get started, I will say that I'm a Nisi brand ambassador and they sent me this lens to test, but I am going to give you a totally honest review and let you know everything that I like and dislike. I've been testing it out on my Sony a7 III for about a month now, so let's get into it. So this lens is for mirrorless full frame cameras and it comes in mounts for Sony, Canon, Nikon, and Fuji. It's called the Sunstar and that's because it's designed specifically to create Sunstars at any aperture f4 through f22. Typically you need to be at f16 or higher to get that result with an ordinary lens. Here are a few examples that I've taken from f4 to f11 and as you can see it creates a really nice sun star and it adds a nice aspect to these images. It's a really cool feature to have and it allows for more flexibility when shooting if you want that effect in your image. When it comes to sharpness this lens performs very well for the price point. It currently retails at $579 in the US. At f4 the center is very sharp but it does fall off a little bit in the corners but once you start to stop down to 5.6 through f11 the corners do sharpen up a lot. Typically when shooting landscapes I tend to shoot around f11 anyway so it's not really a huge concern for me. It's definitely not a reason to avoid the lens if you're looking for an ultra wide angle option that won't break the bank. While testing this lens I found that focusing to infinity and shooting around f11 to be a good combination for most landscape situations. However, if you have something very close to your lens and your foreground it will start to get a little bit soft. At that point I found setting the focus ring to 4 or 5 feet works well to ensure your foreground object is sharp. I did notice that there is a bit of a problem with vignetting. Um, but it isn't severe and you'll notice that the corners get a little bit dark. I tried shooting throughout the f-stop range to see if it would clear up um, but it was still visible in every image. You can fix it pretty easily in post but it's definitely worth noting. Typically with a wide angle lens you'll see some form of distortion and this one's no different than any other. It is controlled very well though and to some it may be hard to notice at all. In this image you can see that there's some slight bending on the horizon, but overall I think it's pretty minimal and I really like the results that I get with this lens. It actually performs a lot better than I had expected in this area. When it comes to flare the Nisi 15mm handles it pretty well. If you're shooting in a bright light you'll see some flare show up when the light source is close to the edges of your frame, but flare is a pretty common issue with wide angle lenses so it's not really a surprise to see it show up here. Just watch out for it and you can typically recompose to avoid it. Alright, so I covered the build quality in my first impressions video a few weeks back. It is a solid metal construction and it's a very well built. It's a fully manual lens meaning that you'll have to manually focus and manually control your aperture. Both rings move really smoothly and you can actually feel the aperture ring click into each stop as you move it. The lens has a small front element and a 72mm filter thread which are a huge bonus for landscape shooters that really like to use filters. There's definitely nothing to complain about in terms of the build quality here. Alright, so for pros and cons, let's start with my cons. Personally, I would love to have had autofocus and electronic contacts for aperture control from the camera. With that being said, most mirrorless cameras these days do have manual focus assist features such as peaking that make it a lot easier to ensure you've got your focus right. It's definitely not a deal breaker, but I do like that kind of stuff in 2021. It's also worth noting that you're not going to get any XF data from the lens, which is kind of a bummer. And that did actually make it a little bit harder to keep track of my aperture when I was doing the test shots. Alright, for my pros, this lens is light and compact, making it great for travel and everyday carry. And for the price, it's extremely well built and a solid design. It doesn't feel cheap and fragile like some other lenses can. The Sunstar effect at all apertures is a fun and nice bonus to have as well, but the biggest pro for me is the design of the front element and the filter thread. The fact that I can use standard screw-on filters or my V6 square holder with it is huge, 
And with a lot of wide angle lenses, that's not possible. You're gonna have to get another set of filters, a holder. And not only are you getting a second set to carry around with you, you're spending a few hundred dollars minimum for that second set. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of other things I'd rather spend my money on these days than a second set of filters. So I'd say if you're a landscape photographer that loves to use filters and is looking for a reasonably priced super wide angle lens, you can't go wrong with the Nisi 15mm Sunstar. For a sub $1,000 lens, you're obviously going to make some sacrifices in terms of features, but this one does give you a few things that some other options can't. Really it comes down to you and your personal preference. For me, this is a really nice addition to my bag and so far I love the images I've been able to create with it. All right, so I'm going to leave you with some final images that I've captured over this past month. If you found this review helpful, please give it a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future and I'll see you in the next one.